Uh, these are the horn blocks and springs, and they're much more substantial than the, the ones I received before. Um, most obviously, they have an extra boss on the bottom here. And now this is designed to, uh, you hold it in a vise and drill through, and then there'll be a, a locking pin that will go across there and probably have a screw thread on this end. And that will hold in the uh, axle boxes so that when you lift the tender up, all the axles don't just stay on the track. <laughs> That'd be pretty pointless. So as you can see, because it's a, a, a brass casting, um, it's a bit dished on the back, so I'll need to flatten that out on the surface plate. I am aware it's fully illegal to use the surface plate to uh, put wet and dry on and then uh, get things flat with. So here's an axle box, and this is the casting, and it actually fits in from the back. Um, but it's not the world's worst fit. It definitely needs some work. Um, but I think what we can do is just tidy this up with some, uh, some hand files and we should be in a fairly good position, I think. So there we go. I think it's important to remember these aren't bearing surfaces. So um, this comes in from the back and on the inside we have the, uh, the tender frame which actually fits in. So I'm gonna uh, do the rest of those just like that. And then hopefully these are going to be ready to rivet on. Well, apart from drilling, I've got to drill on first, obviously. Um, but other than that, I think the, uh, the filing and the, the grinding should be done on these. It needs a 16th of a hole for a 16th inch pin. Um, I'm not that confident that this is going to drill straight. I have, of course, just realized we have this tie bar here that I'll have to remove when I'm filing this out. But I think actually that will be handy to give it some rigidity when I'm drilling the clearance holes through here for the retaining bar. If you're thinking this looks like a very shiny Jacobs chuck, you'd be right, because I finally bought myself a new Jacobs chuck that's fitted into an, a Morse Taper 2 arbor that has a JT6 taper for the, the chuck, which has a drawbar fitting, so I can probably fit it now into the mill without needing to take the whole drawbar out. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to try it out and uh, get some drilling on here. Was a bit of a non-event. I'll get the rest of these drilled and get back to you. If you're wondering why I'm not using the propane torch, uh, I turned it on for the first time earlier today and I think it scares me in ways I can't fully articulate. So I want to get a bit more comfortable with it before I start using it on parts that I've just about finished machining. Uh, but don't worry, it will see a lot of use soon. I'm going to put a spotting drill in there first. I wanted to try out a technique on this, which is to uh, effectively use the end of the quill travel as a depth stop. I don't have a discrete depth stop on here, although I do have fine feed. So what I've done is I've extended the quill as far as it will go and locked it. I've then brought the table up to the same height as the top of these pieces here. And then I will now use the quill unlocked um, to travel down to this exact height each time. And I'll raise the table up by the exact amount I need to drill down, if that makes any sense. So now I need to go down on here a uh, further 375,000. I've just realised while saying that I drilled down to 325,000 in those previous axle boxes. 
All right, so I'm gonna have to set this all up again. I won't put you through all that. I'll be back in a bit. You might be forgiven for thinking this looks a lot like what we just did, but this time I'm drilling, drilling the holes to retain the springs and an oil hole uh, down into the bore. My cunning plan for making this slightly less painful is to basically use this side of the vise as the place that I'm gonna be putting all of my uh, axle boxes in. And one of them over here will just be to uh, keep the vise parallel. Uh, and then I will be able to remove this, put the next one in, drill down, remove, keep doing it, and keep replacing. Uh, keep... every... In this case, I need to drill two holes, uh, one in each end of each stretcher bar, um, and the distance is half an inch from the end and, and centralized, so an eighth of an inch down the middle. Uh, and I've realized that I can use a wiggler to find the end here, and then come in from this side and use it to find this side, and then get that exact coordinate I need. But that's no use if I then have to take this out, put a new one in, and I'm not gonna be, you know, I'll get the longitudinal positioning okay, but then I'm gonna have to slide this back and forth to find the, the end point. And actually, I could just try and use a, a vice stop of sorts. So that's what this is. This is just a DTI stand with the DTI taken off and, or the dial indicator, sorry. And uh, this is a, a lathe tool that I've just put in here because I can't reach into the into the device with such a, a narrow uh, piece in there. And I've just clamped it to the parallel so it doesn't go flying off or change angle or whatever. Um, and so now in theory, I can take this out, switch it 180 degrees and put it back in, drill again. And I'll know that the hole on this side is exactly the same distance from the end as on this side. So if I'm wrong, at least I'm consistently wrong and that should hopefully cancel out the error. There you go. Good vice stop. I'm really pleased I got that Jacobs chuck. So this is where we find ourselves at the end of this video, and it feels like we are entering the final furlong for the tender chassis. As you can see, all the components here are, are essentially what's required to make a functional chassis. We've got the frame sides and the beams at the ends, the stretchers, the axles, these, these little fixing angles which fix the frames to the ends. We've got the axle boxes, which are all machined up, and we've got the horn guide and spring castings that are all nice and machined up and, and flat, ready to rivet on. So at this point, I need to figure out what I'm gonna do next. There are two choices. The first choice is to rivet on these to the tender frames and rivet on the, uh, I don't know what they're called, these little hooks at the bottom that are used to stop things getting caught under the wheels um, and do some riveting there. That could be fun. Um, alternatively, I now need to fix these angles into the, into the beams. Now I've squared them up and I'll double check the squareness again. And I think what I'm going to do is rivet them, I think. Or alternatively, I can, I can try brazing them. I would really appreciate any advice or comments anyone might have about attacking that. If you could let me know in the comments, that'd be great.